Good day, grade 11s. My name is Kaden Mazzucchere. I'm the author and publisher of the Distinction Bound Student Textbooks. Well, welcome to lesson number 59 from the grade 11 textbook. I've written economics grade 10, 11, and 12, and um, I've also published those books. I've also published business studies grade 11 and 12. Well, welcome to my channel. Like, subscribe, invite a friend, invite a colleague to join us and have discussions. We have the comment section down below. Add your comments. Tell me what your thoughts are. If you want to inquire on textbooks, yes, you can also put your comment there. I read every comment that uh, comes on any of my videos. Okay, I make it a point that I go through all of them and I try to uh, answer uh, or reply to all of them. Well, as usual, we start our lesson with some homework and here are the responses so uh basically it was just straightforward you know what an inferior good does for a the substitution effect will decrease the quantity demanded as price increases consumers will buy other goods but to be more specific sorry excuse me they would uh switch to normal goods number b the income effect will increase uh the quantity demanded as in as price increases real income decreases uh, so consumers will purchase more of the inferior good the substitution effect is um, larger than the income effect if the income effect uh, were larger than the substitute effect more of the good would be purchased as the income per as the price increased increased and the demand curve would uh, be upward sloping okay let's move on to today's lesson cross elasticity of demand now here with income elasticity of demand all we wanted to know was is a good inferior or is a good uh what normal with in, with cross elasticity of demand we want to see the relationship between goods okay so we have three sides number one are goods related and if so how related are they Goods can be related in ways of being uh, substitutes like uh, tea and coffee and goods can be related in uh, ways of being complements like tea and sugar. Okay, and then uh, goods may in some cases not be related at all like uh, tea and washing powder. Okay, so basically uh, what we are going to see is what would happen to quantity demanded of another good if the price of this other good of okay let me say what would happen to uh, quantity demanded for coffee if the price of tea goes up what would happen to quantity demanded for the price of ah what would happen to quantity demanded for sugar if the price of coffee would drop something like that but another case will be what would happen to demand for uh for towels or for shoes if the price of coffee goes up basically nothing because these goods are not related okay so with that in mind that is the idea of cross elasticity of demand okay with uh, price elasticity of demand we want to know a change how responsive is demand if the price of that same good goes up or it goes down so the response tells us whether it's perfectly elastic perfectly inelastic unitary all that stuff all those five degrees of elasticity with supply is the same price elasticity of supply is the same if the price changes how responsive is demand is the supply for that particular product then the next one was income elasticity what happens if your income goes up what do you consume more of what do you consume less of something like that so it tells us whether a good is inferior or normal the last one which is what we are doing right now is cross elasticity which uh will tell us whether goods how related goods are are they substitutes are they complements or they are not related at all like i said in lesson 58 this whole thing prepares us for the next topic which is relative the uh, prices okay so without wasting any of your time let's get down into cross elasticity so the cross elasticity of demand and we say ec and obviously that c is for cross or cross price elasticity of demand measures the responsiveness of the quantity demanded for a good to a change in the price of another good ceteris paribus meaning 
all other things equal because if we don't keep all other things equal the reason why people may demand more coffee due to okay look if we don't think keep other things equal let me give you a typical example okay what would expect is if the price of coffee goes down uh, demand for 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 tea will go down the reason is cheaper coffee will some people who drink tea will start buying coffee because it's cheaper now okay however all other things equal because if we don't keep other things equal look tea uh, the price of coffee could go down and then maybe there is a pandemic uh, like what we have right now which a uh, study might show that people who drink tea who drink coffee are at higher risk so do you notice that a drop in price will do nothing to quantity demanded for tea actually demand for tea could even increase even more as people are, are, are running away from coffee because of the, the the research that has come that uh people who drink tea uh coffee are at risk something like that so for us to understand these things that we uh, study in economics we it's crucial that we keep other things constant so that we see because it won't make sense because what we know is if the price of coffee goes down demand for for tea will drop because people who drink tea will switch to the substitute which is coffee which has become cheaper but all other things equal because if they are not equal people might drink more tea for some other reason so it's crucial that we keep all other things equal i think it's clear okay so the demand for a good or service is affected by the price of related goods or services a reduction in the price of coffee yeah for example uh, would increase the demand for sugar suggesting that sugar is a complement of coffee yes it is a reduction in the price of coffee however would reduce the demand for tea uh, suggesting that coffee is a substitute for tea and the reason uh, demand for tea drops uh, due to a reduction that's basically what i was talking about just now is because people who drink tea will start drinking coffee because what's attracting them to drinking coffee is the price of coffee which has turned to become cheaper than it was before maybe they were drinking tea because coffee was expensive it's as simple as that so the measure economists use to describe the responsiveness of demand for a good or service to a change in the price of another good or service is called cross elasticity of demand and you can see where the term came from because we are looking this happens but it, it the effect is on another good so it's like cross affecting because the word elasticity simply means response so how responsive is another good to a change in price of another good so come on cross elasticity simple to explain so it equals the percentage change in the quantity demanded of one good or service as at a specific price divided by the percentage change in the quantity demanded in in the price of a related good or service so why we are varying the price of a related good when we consider the cross price the cross price elasticity of demand so the response of quantity demanded is shown as a shift of the demand curve so the cross price elasticity of demand for good a for example with respect to the price of good b is given uh, by the formula down here so cross elasticity of demand is equal to percentage change in quantity demanded for of good a divided by percentage change in the price of good b now what is identical about all these things that we've been doing like from day one when we did price elasticity of demand is that percentage change in quantity demanded goes on top okay then uh with pr price elasticity of supply percentage change in quantity supplied goes on top with income elasticity of um demand 
uh, percentage change in quantity demanded goes on top and the income goes uh, at the bottom. So in an exam, I don't think you can mix these things up and say, by the way, what goes on top? Because if they were changing, like, guys, remember, with income elasticity, percentage change in income goes on top and percentage change in quantity demanded goes at the bottom. No, that would be con confusing. But in all cases, if you have realized, percentage change in quantity demanded or quantity supplied is always on top. The price is the one that is at the bottom. Like you see here, percentage change in quantity demanded for good A divided by percentage change in the price of good B. So whatever it is that we tell you that the price of that particular thing has gone up or gone down, you put that percentage change at the bottom and the percentage change in quantity demanded of another good which price for that particular good is not given, you put that percentage change on top. So you are not going to mix it up. It's impossible. So cross price elasticities of demand define whether goods are substitutes, complements or unrelated. I've mentioned this already. So if two goods are substitutes, an increase in the price of one will lead to an increase in the demand for another. The cross price elasticity of demand is positive in that case. If two goods are complements, an increase in the price of one good will lead to a reduction in the, in the demand for the other. The cross elasticity of demand is negative. So if two goods are unrelated, a change in the price of one will not affect the demand for other, for the other. So the cross price elasticity of demand is zero. So depending on what answer you get, the good is either a substitute, a complement, or it's not even related. Simple. So let's have a look at this conclusion, which is more or less the same as the one we had on income elasticity. But with income elasticity, the idea was, is this good a normal good or an inferior good? But with cross elasticity, we, it has nothing to do with that. I can even add another one here, which says unrelated. Okay, I'll do it. So if goods are substitutes, give me an example, tea and coffee, simple. An increase in the price of tea causes an increase in the demand for coffee simple because uh if tea is more expensive tea, people drink coffee let me do it like this yeah if tea is more ex expensive people drink coffee another one a decrease in the price of coffee would cause a decrease in the demand for 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 tea why because uh, coffee has become cheaper and so people will switch from tea to coffee then demand for tea will decrease simple Right, let's go to compliments. I'm going to go for coffee and sugar. An increase in the price of coffee will cause a decrease in demand for sugar because, because coffee is, but remember all other things equal. And because an increase in the price of what of coffee means that people drink less coffee so what goes along with it will be demanded less simple as that but a decrease in the price of coffee will cause an increase in the demand for 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 sugar let's go to unrelated goods what do you think happens an increase in the price of coffee has no effect to demand for shoes a decrease in the price of coffee has no effect to the demand for shoes. So what it means is these are substitutes, these are complements, and these are unrelated. Okay, simple. So an examination of the demand for local television advertising with respect to the price of radio advertising revealed that these two goods are clear substitutes because those who don't if you don't have advertise on tv then you'd advertise on local radio so a 10 percent increase in the price of radio advertising led to a 10 percent increase you see the same direction in the demand for uh, so look if they go in the same direction then these are definitely substitutes in demand for local television advertising so so that the cross elasticity of demand for local television advertising with respect to changes in the price of radios advertising was one and b take note with income elasticity of demand and cross elasticity of demand we are primarily concerned with whether the measure uh the measured value of these elasticities is positive or negative in case of income elasticity of demand this tells us whether these goods are normal or inferior 
In the case of cross elasticity of demand, it tells us whether these goods are substitutes, complements, or unrelated. On the other hand, with price elasticity of demand, we are uh, concerned with whether the measure, uh, the measured absolute value, is uh, of this elasticity is greater less than or equal to one because this gave us information about what happens to total revenue as price changes so the term elastic or inelastic apply to price elasticity of demand take note and not income or cross and price elasticity of supply they are not used to describe income or cross elasticity of demand okay so this has brought us to the end of the lesson. As usual, like, subscribe, and invite a friend. Thank you so much. God bless.